Good evening and welcome to our new four-week class, Conscious Oneness with God. Now, we're immediately going to hear a very high message. And so let's first of all rest and relax and find a beautiful spaciousness and therefore receptivity for the next two or three minutes so that we can be lifted right away from that which seems to be this hour into a greater sense and experience of that which is and thereby start a truly heavenly experience of being during these classes. One of the most remarkable statements we hear of truth, and it's found in the Bible, Luke 24, 5, is, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Now, let us understand this. Only God is. Only. And God is invisible to the five senses. The effect of God is that which the five senses form, but it of its own self is nothing. We could say it of its own self is not God, but that's untrue because all is God. All is spirit. All is the one presence of the incorporeal being that we call God. And so even the effect is actually nothing but God. But the effect of its own self isn't God. It's an effect of God. It's a form of God that the mind is making. 
And it actually is God. It actually is spirit because there is none else. But it of its own self is nothing. So we can say now that because God itself is invisible to the senses and the effect of God is the mind forming God, forming images, forming three-dimensional conceptual images of that one presence, one substance that is indeed God. But nevertheless, those images, those forms of their own self are nothing. They, of their own self, are simply images and therefore dead. They have no life of their own. They have no substance of their own. They have no law or principle of their own. They're dead. They're literally dead matter. If we were able to, and of course we're not, disconnect the image, the effect, from God, it would instantaneously collapse into a heap of dust. Not even dust, into a heap of nothingness. Because literally, the form of its own self is nothing. It doesn't just have no life. It is nothing. It doesn't just have no power. It is nothing. It doesn't just have no form or no body, no quality, no character, no amount. It is nothing. Therefore, if we were able to disconnect God from that form, from that image, from that conceptual experience the mind is forming of God, then instantaneously... All of experience, everything we can name, would literally disappear. There'd be not a sign of it anywhere in eternity. Now, if we realize this, and from the moment we realize it, then all we ever wish to do is seek the substance itself, the life itself, the quality, the condition, the truth itself, because without that truth, nothing is. Nothing is. Now, let's hear Luke 24, 5 again. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Why do you seek truth among the effect? among the form that you can name, among the tangible experience that the mind is having of that which actually is the life, God itself, spirit itself. Why do you seek God? Why do you seek life? Why do you seek wealth? Why do you seek love among the effect that which you can name? Because it's not there. And this is what we're being told. Jesus, who was believed to be dead and in the tomb, was being sought. And yet the angels were able to say, Why do you seek the living among the dead? The angels knew that Jesus wasn't dead. There is no death. And yet, Jesus was being sought in the tomb. Why do you seek the living? Jesus is alive. Life is eternal. The only life. Why do you seek that life, no matter what you call him or her or it, among the dead? This is the most profound statement once we grasp its truth. If we are seeking any life, any love, any wealth, any awareness, any understanding, any effect, any solution, any peace, any harmony, in or of the effect, we will never find it because there is no life, there is no God in the effect. And again, let's make sure we understand this. Everything is God. Everything is truth, spirit, omnipresence, fully present. 
fully manifest, visible, tangible. But as the mind forms its forms, forms its concepts, forms its idea, witnesses its own form or sense of omnipresence, of God, that form of its own self, that experience of its own self is dead. And you see, therefore, if we're trying to find life, if we're trying to find God in the experience, in the effect, in the form, in this world, we fail. And the angels looked, I'm sure, with loving amusement at the efforts the human mind makes to find God, to find truth, life, in the effect, in the dead. Now, realize that as soon as the mind thinks, it is thinking in a dead way. As soon as the mind is able to name, it is naming the dead. It's naming that which has already happened. It's naming that which has already come forth into effect and is therefore dead. There is no life in that effect. There is no love, no wealth, no harmony, peace, nothing, no fulfillment, no truth to be found anywhere in that effect. That effect is dead. Everything we can name is dead. Now, it seems to have life. That's undeniable. It seems to have a span of life. That span is also undeniable. Nothing of effect lives forever. Nothing of effect, even inanimate, survives forever. Everything we can name has a span of nameable existence and then dissolves or is destroyed or shrivels up into nothingness. And so realize that as soon as the mind is able to name anything whatsoever. It's naming the dead. And that dead seems to have this span of life in varying degrees. And that's only because there is a little living life in the effect. And this we can understand by slowing down the life experience. Let's slow down light. From the speed of light to the speed of a human life or the speed of a car travelling along the road, let's say. Imagine that, the speed of light stretched out so that now it appears as the speed of a human life, which may last 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120, 150 years or whatever it may be or the speed of a car travelling along the road. Now, it seems to have life only because there is momentum left in the experience. But only momentum, it's not fresh life, it is momentum. For instance, if we were driving, let's say, 50 miles an hour, and then we turned off the engine and yet we kept the gears in neutral, then our car would, through momentum, carry on moving for a certain distance. I don't know what that distance is. It has no life, fresh life, powering it. The engine is off, but because of momentum, it seems to still be driving. And if observed from the sidewalk, then perhaps it would seem as if that car is travelling, at least to begin with, in a perfectly normal way at 50 or 45 or 40 or 35 miles an hour, and no one would know that the engine is actually off. It's travelling purely by momentum. And this is exactly the experience of the conceptual life. This is the experience of the human life, the animal life, the vegetable life. This is the experience of everything we can name. By degrees, it is living only 
because of the momentum of effect. But does it have any life in it whatsoever? No, not an ounce. And so in this way, I'm calling it dead. And indeed, it was called dead by the angels who were just a little way off the tomb. Why do you seek the living among the dead? There's no life there to be found. The living are God itself, spirit itself. Now, because everything is consciousness. Now, now, let's really get still here. Be still and know what is just about to be said. Be still, be spacious, be peaceful. And be ready for what's about to be said to pour through your consciousness. To bubble up into the well springs of living awareness as and through your consciousness. Because God, Spirit, the Infinite, is consciousness, everything is an act of consciousness. Everything is consciousness in activity. Now think, think. With what we've just heard, that everything we can name, everything of this world, is dead, and yet God itself is life, and the only life, God itself is wealth, and the only wealth, God itself is love and the only love. God itself is peace and harmony and joy and union and the only peace there is, the only harmony and joy and union there is. There is none else. I am the Lord and besides me there is none else and I am invisible to the five senses and yet I am all. If you see me Jesus said, if you see the physical sense of me, you actually see the Father. You actually see God because there is only God. But the physical sense that you're seeing of its own self is dead. I of my own self am nothing. He may as well have used the word dead. I of my own self, the appearing physical sense you're having of the I that I am, is dead. It's nothing. It has no life, no character, no quality, no power, no substance. Nothing. It's dead imagery. And so, if our consciousness is being the activity of believing the imagery, believing that which appears, believing that it of its own self has life, has power, has a good or bad quality, a good or bad condition, a good or bad character, if our consciousness individually is being the belief of an image being worth something, an image being worth a particular amount, a dollar being worth a dollar, and a million dollars being worth a million dollars, therefore a million dollars is far more wealth than one dollar, 
If we believe that of wealth, if we believe wealth is in the image, wealth is in the dollar, if we believe buying power is in the dollar of its own self, if we believe life is in the body of its own self, if we believe love is in the relationship of its own self, if we believe peace is amongst the people of their own self or amongst the governments of their own selves, if we believe all this, then we are being the consciousness of that belief and there is the disconnection between life and death, truth and untruth. The evidence of truth and the non-evidence, or we can say the failure of being able to evidence truth. And this is because, as we've heard, consciousness is everything. God is consciousness. Spirit is consciousness. Therefore, whatever our individual consciousness is being is our individual experience. You catch that? The disconnection between God and this world, and therefore the ability to witness this world as truth and filled with truth, being governed by and as the power and substance and form of truth, exists purely in the act of consciousness. There isn't a real disconnection, but because everything is consciousness, the disconnection or the connection exists purely as an act of your consciousness and my consciousness individually. And that disconnection is the belief, the love or the hate and the effort for anything at all in the conceptual, this world experience of truth. By the degree that we love the form only, the form of its own self, without realizing that that form actually is the whole of God and Spirit and Truth, fully present there in all its beauty and bounty and glory and freedom, certainly appearing as this, him or her or it. If we do not realize that, and we love the form or the being itself, of its own self, then we are the disconnection that leaves our experience devoid of truth and never able to find truth. If we hate, if we dislike, if we're fearful of something that we can name or someone that we can name or a condition that we can name that we're experiencing through the five senses, then we are being the disconnection in experience only, not in truth, but in experience only, because whatever our consciousness is being, is experience. And so we worship the dead. We love the dead. We hate something which actually is dead. It has no power, no quality to hate or love. Or fear. We are hating or loving or fearing the dead. It's traveling by momentum only, yet we think it is real life or has real power, either to benefit us or harm us. And this is completely and utterly untrue and is witnessable as completely and utterly untrue the very moment we grasp the truth that only God is. And because God is invisible to the five senses, anything we're loving, hating, worshipping, believing, reacting to, making effort for, of the five senses is actually devoid completely of truth, is dead, 
is traveling is inexperienced only by momentum, but has no life in it whatsoever, no love, no wealth, no power whatsoever, and therefore we are stuck with an experience we cannot bring truth to. We're literally disconnected from truth because our consciousness is the disconnection. Everything, everything is the activity of consciousness. Everything. Really lift into a vivid awareness of this right now. Everything is consciousness. Everything. Your entire experience is governed by the activity of your consciousness. What is your consciousness doing? What is it being? What is it believing? Where is it making its effort? What is it loving? What is it interested in? What does it desire to become engaged with? What does it want to do? Is it drawn mostly to the effect? Is it interested mostly in the effect? Is it satisfied mainly with the effect? Does it spend most of its hours each 24 Involved with, in one way or another, the effect? If so, then it is involved with the dead. It is involved with carcasses. They all seem to have some momentum, certainly, but actually, of their own selves... The entire world and universe of its own self and everyone and everything in it of their and its own self is dead. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Why do you seek satisfaction among the dead? Why do you seek result among the dead? Why do you seek to gain more of the good dead, and be rid of more of the bad dead. It's funny, isn't it, when we put it like that? But this is the truth. My kingdom is not of this world. And remember, my kingdom doesn't mean Jesus' personal kingdom. My kingdom, the truthful kingdom, the truth of all, the truth of you, the truth of God, the truth of life, of wealth, of love, of peace around the entire world, the harmony and union of beings around the world. Exists right here among you, as you, as your very life, your very world, your very consciousness. And yet, you're seeking better dead and seeking to be rid of bad dead. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the belief in the effect, the belief that the dead that which has momentum but no life itself is anything at all to be satisfied with, to work for, to try and improve or pacify. And I have lifted into the life itself, the living 
truth, the living being, the living world. And that is God alone. God alone. All is actually God alone. But as I look at God alone through the mind, because the mind is very slow, remember this, it's very slow awareness, and that's why we have the experience of effect and concept and idea, time, space, cause, effect. This is why it's simply, as we've heard before, a very, very, in fact, excruciatingly slow experience of awareness. And so everything of it is devoid of the speed of, or the instantaneity, the oneness, the nowness of God, of life itself. And so do you see, as soon as that very, very slow awareness witnesses itself, it's witnessing that which actually has no life left, is just running by momentum. But now we realize that in conscious oneness, in the connected consciousness, the consciousness that realizes that actually all is God, therefore appearance will of its own self be ignored, We will not look for God. We will not look for truth. We will not look for peace or harmony or a miracle among the dead. But we realize the life, the wealth, the peace, the miracle, the love is among God, is God itself, which means is oneness itself without effect, pure oneness without effect, And so we seek conscious oneness with God itself or as God itself. Conscious oneness with life itself devoid of effect, with wealth itself devoid of effect. Remember, the effect is simply the excruciatingly slow awareness of oneness, awareness of life, of wealth, of love, of peace and harmony. And so forget the effect. We are seeking conscious oneness with and as life itself, the presence itself, that presence which is, I was going to say, too fast to be named. Can you see that? It's now. It is oneness now. It's faster than spontaneous. Too fast to be named. So if we're naming it, and if we want truth as a name, as a healed or improved or pacified or prospered name, we're too late. Truth is too fast for a name. That's clear, isn't it? And so we want conscious oneness with that which is too fast to name, with God itself. Too present to name, too now to name. Conscious oneness with and as God itself. Spirit alone. Truth alone. Too fast to name. To now, to one, to name. And we realize that because everything is an activity of consciousness, when we have conscious oneness and we maintain that conscious oneness throughout our day and night, then our world is connected with and as oneness and now the motor is on again. Now life is filling full all effect and now we have effect that doesn't die. Now we have body that does not die. 
Now we have individual you and me that does not die. It never loses its consciousness of life and love and presence. Never. Now we have a world that doesn't decay, doesn't grow old, doesn't die. Literally. Literally. Because we are being oneness as all. We are being the connection of oneness as all. We're able to look out into and as the effect of oneness, but without the belief in the effects of its own self. We're able to look out as one with conscious oneness, conscious awareness that everything of experience actually is the presence of God itself, the presence of oneness itself. And yet, because it's being observed through the conceptual mind, it appears conceptually, but it of its own self is nothing. It of its own self is dead. But now, it is not of its own self. It is of oneness. It is of God. It is of spirit and truth. And now everywhere we look, we can witness the wellspring of life filling full the effect. Flowing over, being the beauty, the bounty of the never-ending effect of oneness witnessed through the mind. There's the connection. Now, This is exactly what Jesus is telling us in John 15. I am the vine. And you are the branches. Keep yourself connected with me and you have life abundant. But if you take yourself away from me, this is the conscious disconnection the consciousness, the being that is believing the effect of its own self. If you do that, if you disconnect in consciousness from me, from oneness, then you shall be as a branch cut off and withered and thrown into the fire. You're dead. You're literally dead. Your experience, I should say, is dead. Literally It travels with some momentum for a certain number of decades and then withers and dies. And indeed, men put the carcass of it in the fire or bury it under the ground. It's dead. It's dead here and now of its own self. It's just living by momentum. And the whole world is dead here and now of its own self and is only living by momentum. But the moment and the very moment you connect... You are consciously one with and as God, Spirit, Truth. Then you witness all effect being the wellspring of life itself as the eternal effect you're witnessing, the eternal him, her, it you're witnessing, and the fullness thereof. You will witness miracles. You will witness regeneration. You will witness... Renewed life, renewed strength, renewed abundance. You will witness the miracle of abundance, the miracle of life. You will even witness what appears to the mind to be dead life, coming back to life. We had this very thing happen on Saturday morning. This very thing, the miracle of life. Once consciousness is in oneness with God and not trying to improve or bring life to or prosper or pacify the effect. In conscious oneness with God indeed, Miracles are witnessed. This was the account of Peter and John. They were living in conscious oneness with and as God. And 
outside the Temple Gate Beautiful. They came across, as you all know, came across the lame man, the cripple. And that lame beggar asked them for money. But Peter and John stopped and said, I have no silver or gold, but I will give you what I have. In the name of truth, in the name of oneness, get up and walk. Because they knew that there was no power to hinder mobility in that which appeared as that man, that effect. The effect of its own self is dead. It has no power, either good or bad. There's no bad power any more than there is good power. There's no bad power hindering that man's ability to walk, making him lame, any more than there is good power enabling him to walk. Remember that now, there is no problem nor solution in God. Only problems and seeming solutions appear in amongst the dead, in amongst the effect. There's a very great problem amongst the dead, and that's death itself. And there's a very wonderful solution, and that is life. But in God, neither death nor life exists. Only God exists is and god is life but with a capital l something we cannot understand cannot explain and certainly cannot bring to the dead cannot bring to the effect and witness any effect of it amongst that effect no no only god is so indeed that man got up and was able to walk perfectly well and started running around to the astonishment of all the worshippers who were there at the time. But Peter spoke to the worshippers and said, Why do you stare at us so, as though it were some power or some piety of ours that had made him able to walk? The God of our forefathers has done this honour to his servant. It is by his power and through faith in him that this man whom you see and recognize has been made strong again. You see, the effect, the servant, is made strong again, is filled full of life and freedom again the moment conscious oneness is brought to the scene. The moment the connection is brought back to that which, without that conscious oneness, without that connection, is literally dead and living only by momentum. And so it is by his power and through faith in him, in oneness, in truth, that this effect, this man whom you see and recognize, has been made strong again. It is by conscious oneness. It is by the power of oneness itself for itself, not for the effect. Remember, the effect is simply the imagery of oneness. But if that is unknown, then we believe the effect of its own self and then we're lost in truth. But as soon as we know it, then it is by the power of oneness for and as oneness alone. Never for that which we can name. We are never trying to solve the problem by using or trying to realize truth for that problem. Remember, truth is too fast to be named. I hope that's clear. I hope that's okay. It's a bit of a clumsy idea, but I think it brings a beautiful and simplified clarity to the truth. And indeed, truth is too fast to be named. As soon as we are naming anything at all, recognizing, being able to describe anything at all, remember, including the problem and the solution, 
then we're so far out of truth and should never be surprised why truth cannot be witnessed in or as or amongst that name. So it is the power of oneness for and as oneness itself that then witnesses as the connection continues, the oneness, the awareness of oneness continues, is then witnessed as the life of oneness, now as effect. And there is the healing consciousness, there is the prospering consciousness, there is the loving consciousness, there is the peace consciousness and the harmony consciousness, there is the union The only union is the union of oneness. The union of oneness. And of course, in oneness, we are beyond union. And yet we will witness that oneness as the union of the effect. As long as we are going to oneness for and as oneness alone. Never for the name, never for the effect. I had for years not understood Jesus' statement that where two or more of you gather in my name, there am I amongst you. I always realized that this could not mean a physical pair where a pair or more of you human beings are gathered together in my name, there am I amongst you. It couldn't be that it took two individuals before God was present, God was able to be witnessed amongst us. Couldn't mean that. If that was so, Jesus himself would never have been able to be the great illumined light, the great presence of God that indeed he was. He was only one. So it couldn't mean two people. And then one day deep in meditation it came to me. And beautifully fits into our message tonight where two or more of you gather in my name. Now, forget the name Jesus. He's speaking of God, of truth, of oneness. So let's interpret. Where two or more of you gather in oneness. Now, what is the two or more of you? It is the effect. Now, remember, you and I as a conceptual effect, as a personal sense of being, living with a personal sense of experience in and of this world, believing, this is before we've risen into truth, believing that we of our own selves have life, the organs and functions of our body have life, we have a quality of our own, good or bad by degree, we have a character of our own, good or bad by degree, we have family, we have love, we have things, we have activity, we have money, we have this, that and the rest, of its own self or of their own selves, all personal to us and not our neighbours, while we're being that degree of consciousness, the material or physical sense of consciousness, then we are just a concept, being, a concept of being that we're living. And we have conceptual experiences, conceptual forms, amounts, beings, filling our world, filling our experience. And so, let's interpret like this, where two or more concepts, or where two or more effects gather together in oneness... There am I amongst you. So oneness is truthful identity. Oneness is the recognition that 
all is God, despite appearance. All is God. Oneness is the recognition that instead of a personal self, there is just the one self, individually aware as individual self, but never personal. That is truthful identity. I am that. I'm nothing of my own self, but what I really am is the presence of life itself, individually aware, uniquely aware, uniquely expressing at this moment. I am that I am. I am the one presence, for there is no other presence. I am the one life, for there is no other life. And that life is oneness. That life is universal, infinite, eternal. Therefore, I am one. I am infinite. I am eternal. I'm not personal. I'm not human. Even though I appear to be, I am not. I am the one life, the one substance, the one infinite and eternal omnipresence of being. There is truthful identity. And everything in and of my consciousness is also, despite its appearance and despite its name, human, animal, vegetable, plant, animate or inanimate, here or over there, it doesn't make any difference. Everything in and of my consciousness is also the fullness of God, fully established, fully manifest, fully demonstrated as the infinity and eternality of God itself. It may be appearing as a flower through my consciousness. It may be appearing as a human being through my consciousness, an animal, an insect, the moon, the sun, the clouds, the mountains, the snowflakes, the valleys, the lakes, the rivers, the twinkles on the water, the raindrops on my cheek the wind on my cheek. It may be appearing as sound or fragrance, sight. I may be touching something, having a tactile experience of that which is actually God. Whatever it is I'm experiencing, I now know actually as the very presence of omnipresence itself. That is truthful identity rather than untruthful identity, which is naming and believing that which appears as being something of its own self. There is the disconnection. So do you see the conceptual sense of you the, or the personal sense of you and the him or her or it of your experience of its own self. These are the two or more. When two or more of you, which means two or more of your experience, you and him, her or it out there, or any number of hims, hers or its out there, when two or more of you gather together in oneness, in my name, in truthful identity, then there's the miracle. There am I amongst you. You have made the connection. You've stepped right into the miracle of truth, of consciousness. And that is, all is oneness. All is one presence. All is one life, one wealth, one freedom, one love, one harmony. All is one. Not two. There isn't God and an effect. There is simply God. God appears as effect, yes, through the mind. But that effect, no matter what the mind calls it, is nothing of its own self. Where two or more of you gather in my name, there am I amongst you. And there am I instantaneously amongst you. It just takes the connection in consciousness in order to witness the truth of oneness, the truth of God as all effect. And the reason that is, the reason it's instantaneous, is because the truth is already out there. Only truth is. 
God already is, oneness already is, the miracle already is, the wholeness, completeness, the fully manifested truth, the fully demonstrated truth is already everywhere about and equally about. And when you peer at that truth as oneness or through the consciousness of oneness, the connected consciousness of oneness, then there it is. It's like opening the curtains and suddenly seeing what's always been there. And that is the truth of all experience. And the truth of all experience is never devoid of life, never devoid of wealth, never devoid of love, never devoid of the fulfillment of experience. So that experience can be that of serving, of giving, of loving, of providing the talent that we happen to have to our neighbours, to our customers, to our students, to our patients. But God is already there fully demonstrated as the entirety of your experience. And the only reason that God is not fully evident to your experience or mine, if God is not evident to mine or God is not evident to you, is the disconnection between what you think of as God and what you think of as the world that needs God, that needs truth, needs healing. But now in conscious oneness, the curtains are open and there is God, fully manifest, fully demonstrated as the fulfillment of whatever it is the mind is observing. Now, how exactly do we attain conscious oneness? Again, because everything of experience is an activity of consciousness, when your consciousness is aware of, thinking about, enjoying, satisfied with, simply spirit alone with never a name attached. Spirit alone, God alone, nothingness alone. The formless, unnameable presence alone, never, never, for any reason other than spirit itself being the experience of itself as you, itself as I. When we can devoid our consciousness of every name, And this isn't to say that we won't witness and see, hear, taste, touch, smell, everything we are used to sensing. But what we're doing is having no interest in it or very little interest in it of its own self and yet realizing that what everything everywhere truly is, is the presence of oneness, the whole of God present at every place at the same time and equally present every place at the same time. And therefore that oneness is that which we seek, the nameless oneness, the nameless presence, that which has no problem nor solution, that which simply is the purity of oneness, the purity of spirit itself, God itself. Just God is. This is bringing our consciousness into conscious oneness.
just oneness is, without a single name, without a single effect, just oneness is. And oneness contains absolutely everything of infinity, everything of God. In oneness is embodied the whole of God and everything God is and has. So the more of oneness I am consciously being, the more I devoid myself of names, of effects, of believing problems or solutions, or wanting solutions for problems, and am consciously in, consciously being just oneness, then paradoxically the more of the rich fruitage of effect do I evidence. It is the presence of oneness that colours effect, that pours life into effect, that pours its wealth into the effect we call money and opportunity, success, achievement. It's the greater conscious oneness that is evidenced through the mind as greater loving relationship. It is greater oneness that is evidenced in the world as greater peace and harmony. You see this? It's not trying to bring truth to the effect so that we get peace and harmony and love and wealth and life. It is the very opposite. It's ignoring the effect, realizing that it of its own self is dead, is nothing. And yet the life, the truth, already fully manifest. Think about that. The truth is already fully manifest. But because we're not being the consciousness of oneness, we're devoid of it as our effect. The truth is already fully demonstrated. Peace is already fully demonstrated. Think about that. Union and harmony and love and bliss are already fully demonstrated. But because we have had a conscious disconnection, we're unable to witness that fully demonstrated truth as our effect. But now, bringing conscious oneness into being and seeking only conscious oneness without name, without effect, without reason, We seek conscious oneness, realizing that that conscious oneness embodies the whole of life itself, love itself, wealth itself, peace itself. And so with conscious oneness, or as we are being conscious oneness, we have all that God is. Suddenly our effect world is being charged with truth, being plumped up with truth in every way. And don't be surprised as you maintain, first of all, as you lift and then maintain conscious oneness. Don't be surprised about the miracles that you witness because remember, they're already fully manifest and demonstrated everywhere as everything. But... That disconnection in consciousness has left us devoid of the experience of the miracle of truth as everything everywhere. But now, in conscious oneness, I am connected. I am being oneness. I am being the two or more gathered in my name, in oneness's name, in oneness. Therefore, I am being the miracle of truthful consciousness. Only oneness is. All is oneness, despite appearance. All is the fullness of one presence, despite appearance. All is the fullness of life, alone. All is the fullness of love, alone. All is the fullness of wealth and infinity, alone. Nothing but God exists, anywhere. 
All is one. All is oneness. I seek oneness without a name. I seek oneness for no reason whatsoever. Only for itself. I seek oneness for its self alone. Its experience alone. The experience of oneness happening as the very I that I am. I feel the peace of oneness. The harmony of oneness. Filling me full. I am aware of the presence of oneness, being the fullness of itself everywhere about, witnessed through my mind as the conceptual forms of oneness that I call this world. But I am never fooled again. All is one and I know it. All is one and I keep my awareness, my consciousness in and as oneness. I never again... Observe anything at all or anyone at all or any condition at all and think that it of its own self is something, either good or bad. No, no, I am the living and walking and continually aware presence of the consciousness of oneness being everywhere present as all. I am the consciousness of oneness. Only oneness is. Only oneness is. Oneness, oneness. Just as the sunbeam, if it were confused, wakes up and realizes everything about me is not anything of my own self, but is the sun itself and the fullness of the sun itself being everything about me. My mind, my body, my substance, my quality, my talent of heat and light. And as I look out, my entire world of all the other sunbeams and everything of the world of the sun is actually nothing of its own self, but is the sun itself. Therefore, I never get confused and think ever that anything of observed experience is something of its own self, but I stay in the consciousness that I and everything of I is the sun and the fullness thereof. I have no responsibility of my own self. I have no burden. I have no substance. I have no talent. I have no amount of my own self. And yet, I have the entire life and body and talent and substance and amount of the sun. And that is infinite and omnipresent. Therefore, I can give and serve and share everything endlessly and without ever a consideration for amount because amount is nothing to consider amount is infinite and I am that and the whole of it is right here where I am therefore the more I am in this awareness of oneness the more I can pour everything I am and everything I have out to serve my kingdom without ever running dry ever running short ever being delayed because omnipresence is right here as the very I that I am, as I remain in conscious oneness with the sun. Okay, and in this way, in this very way, as I remain in conscious oneness with God, as oneness consciousness, then I discover the truth that everything that God is and has is mine Everything God is and has is mine. Sun, 
I am ever with you and all that I have is yours. As I stay in conscious oneness, I'm never thinking of personal self or personal property, personal amount, personal thing. I am in the awareness, the conscious oneness, awareness, that all is God. All is infinity. All is eternality. And all of it is right here as I, as omnipresence. All that God has, I have. All that God is, I am. There is nothing I have and nothing I am of my own self. And there is nothing the world is or has of its own self. But in conscious oneness, I've lifted into the truthful awareness that God is all. And therefore all the effect is the whole of God and everything God is and has. And as I remain in that conscious oneness, I witness everything that God is and has being the experience I have of this world. And it's that that I can give, as Peter and John explained. I don't have anything of dead stuff to give you. I don't have any life that I can give you. I don't have any gold or silver I can give you. I don't have any peace or love I can give you. No, but what I do have, I will give you endless amounts of. And that is oneness, the consciousness of oneness, the identity that you and I both are the whole of God. Now remember, where two or more of you are gathered together in my name, there am I amongst you. So as you now go out in the consciousness of oneness, never identifying anyone or anything as anything but the fullness of God itself, there is the oneness, then do not be surprised that when you give that, instead of giving dead stuff, then the miracle of truth is witnessable and witnessed. All that I am and all that I have is oneness. Only oneness is. And oneness is the infinite itself and everything the infinite is and has. And so indeed I seek oneness alone. And as I seek oneness alone and then rest, as I feel the peace of oneness now being consciously felt happening, then I know that that experience of peace felt happening is the currency of life, the currency of wealth, the currency of love and peace and harmony and joy and freedom being, if you like, pumped into the effectual world, pumped into the experience of life that we call this world. Now all the engines are on again. Life is present again because your consciousness is now connected with that life, being the oneness of the one life, the one love, the one peace that is God. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoy this spiritual audio. Like, share and subscribe for more.